there guys welcome back to the Dutch Sheet channel thank you very much for tuning in and I have me a box from a Speedy Bee. Yes, you've seen the title of this video. This box contains a quadcopter or drone frame for a 5 inch quadcopter. And as you probably know, this is Speedy Bee's first quadcopter frame. So in this video, we're going to take a close look at this frame. Is it any good? Is it an option for you or for me? And uh, are there things that Speedy Bee should improve on this frame? Uh, the first thing I should note is that the packaging is pretty luxurious and actually this is my fourth Speedy B frame. So <laughs> by now I actually do know that these are quality frames. That doesn't mean that they are perfect, we'll get to that uh, in a couple of minutes. But as you can see the packaging is um, well, it's well done. Foam to protect every part of the frame, as you can tell. Foam. Okay, and then we have ourselves a, a manual. Um, I haven't even looked at the manual to be honest. Okay, the manual at least tells you which screw goes where. And that's more or less Everything in okay, so this is in uh, in Chinese and this is in English, and that's basically everything you need to know about a quadcopter frame, I guess. Which screw goes where? As you can see, and you might have seen this in other videos about this frame, every arm is separately packaged. Very, very nice. Okay, so this isn't an unboxing. I'll uh, take everything out of the box and then I'll show you the the parts that make up this frame. Apart from the manual that I already showed you, uh, this is everything you get when you order up this frame. Okay, from left to right, you got two quality straps. Oh, and also a battery pad, as you can see. But two quality stitched and anti-slip uh, coated straps with a metal buckle. This one is for your LiPo and this one has a plastic buckle. This would be for your action camera probably. Okay, and then uh, again you've got an anti-slip mat for your LiPo. Then uh, this isn't super duper conventional, even though there are other frames that do this. The bottom plate is staged. In a lot of quadcopters, especially freestyle quadcopters, you'd have a bottom plate that looks like this. And then you'd have a brace, uh, which would uh, be more or less square, right? So in this frame, um, the, the rear section is elevated compared to the front section. And I'll show that to you once uh, the frame is uh, built. Uh, that'll uh, make it a lot clearer. But uh, again, this is yeah, not completely conventional. Then we've got a top plate, which is very conventional. We've got four arms, <laughs> which is very... Very conventional. Uh, we've got high quality standoffs which also look very nice. I'm not sure what they will look like uh, on camera but uh, yeah they've got a um, bronzish anodization to them. Very very nice. Then here is the camera mount which has the same coloring bronze. Very nice. It uh, gives the frame a, an, a high quality appearance which suits the frame. Everything about this frame uh, looks and feels high quality, in my humble opinion, of course. And then there are screws in different sizes. You've got long screws for your stack. Very nice, by the way, that you get actual screws for your stack. And uh, okay, so the manual tells you which screw goes where. So uh, yeah, that's pretty simple. And if you mess this up, uh, if you use the wrong screw at the wrong place, you'll instantly see that. Um, yeah, building a frame isn't rocket science, right? Okay, the first thing I always check is uh, two things basically. Are all edges nicely chamfered? Uh, or in other words, are they rough? Uh, would they cut you or cabling? And is all the carbon fiber clean? Uh, would you have carbon dust on your fingers? So... In case I didn't mention it before, I think that Speedy B set out to make a very good first impression. 
which I applaud of course. They definitely spent uh, quite a lot of money in the design and the tooling uh, to produce this frame. I don't even know if they actually manufacture it themselves, doesn't really matter. Uh, it's an original frame, but um, everything, or every part of this frame feels luxurious. And it's uh, very hard to translate in that into a video, but uh, these arms, yeah, the edges are very smooth and the, the sides of the carbon fiber are sealed. You might have um, seen people uh, say that you have to treat carbon fiber with CA glue to seal the, the seams. On these arms that's already been done. I'm not sure what they used to seal it. The first time I saw this was on a diatone quadcopter years ago. And uh, yeah, I very much appreciate that of course. It does cost them more money to uh, produce. First of all the chamfering of these edges costs money because it's probably manual labor. And then the sealing of these edges. Yeah. Okay. And um, this... Yeah, obviously the, the chamfering of these parts uh, isn't as pronounced as on the arms because these parts aren't as thick. But there's definitely been chamfering. Okay, and let's run my fingers over every part and see if my fingers get black. Huh. Actually, I was kind of expecting there be some carbon dust on my fingers because I did have carbon fiber dust on the, the previous two frames I've built. This is the, the latest one I received. Uh, disclaimer, I got one of these frames for free from uh, Runcam, which is the same company as Speedbee, and I bought three of them myself. Just so you know. And this is the latest one I uh, received. And this one is completely clean. Again, the other ones I received uh, had a little bit of carbon dust on them. Okay, for what it's worth. Now, the next thing I'll do is uh, build this frame and then I'll come back to you, uh, well, showing you what the actual frame looks like. Here we go. Hot cheeky day. We have ourselves a fully built quadcopter frame. And as you can tell, full uh, stack height uh, screws are included. These uh, do accommodate three layer stacks. Um, I've used these screws in, uh, in my other build, so I know <laughs> that to be true. And yeah, obviously uh, this is a reasonably conventional build style, bottom plate, risers, top plate, so it's easy to build, right? I did by the way come across an, um, an omission in this frame, and yeah, let me touch on that immediately. These screws you see here for your stack are meant for 30 by 30, well 30.5 30 by 30.5 30 stacks, full size stacks, right? The frame does accommodate smaller stacks, 20 by 20. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, but there are 20 by 20 screw holes over here as well. So that's good. Uh, by now the 20 by 20 stacks are very reliable as well. However, you can't reach the 20 by 20 stack screws from the bottom of the frame. So if you build this frame, um, well, you'll uh, have to uh, put those screws in before assembling the frame basically. But also, if you want to surface your stack, you can't. Yeah, you'll have to take uh, the entire frame apart. So that's definitely an omission in this uh, design. And I'll relay that to uh, Speedy B. Uh, they do listen to me. Maybe, by the way, the fact that this one doesn't have carbon dust on it is, uh, well, I told them that uh, about that carbon dust a while back, so maybe they've solved that by now. But again, um, yeah, I should have told them this before. Sorry about that. I just noticed it uh, a minute ago while building this frame. So, yeah, you can't access the 20 by 20 stack screws when the frame is built. Again, the frame can handle a 20 by 20 stack, but uh, you can't service the stack. Oh well. Okay, these camera 
uh, mounts at the front. I love these. Uh, the, my previous freestyle frames, uh, the Gap RC KHX 5s, also had aluminium uh, 5075, I think, aluminium. So a pretty hard aluminium uh, as uh, their camera mount. And that works out very well to kind of smother vibrations. And I've already flown my other SpeedyB, so I know that this works. This uh, camera mount accommodates only micro-sized cameras, just so you know. No mini, just micro. Now, what you can also now see is the staggered bottom design. This, this plate over here is lower than the rest of the, the bottom plate. Now, is that a benefit of any... Uh, well, that is actually a benefit because there's a lot of space and I'm not sure if you'll be able to see that. Yeah, you can see that. There is a lot of space in between these plates. More than enough space for, for instance, a receiver. Or if you run um, Crossfire, you could mount your antenna in between these plates easily. Uh, but again, a, a, a conventional receiver you can definitely easily mount in between the, the frame, frame plates. So that's, that's definitely nice. Uh, don't forget <laughs> to bind your receiver before doing so. <laughs> but again, uh, yeah, there's uh, definitely a lot of room. And you can access that room from the rear as well. Can you see that there? Right. Uh, maybe you can have your antenna come out from the rear, whatever you want. Now, again, I very much like these frames. Uh, I, I have four of them by now, one spare. I am building three mostly identical quadcopters. So, am I biased? No, no, uh, there are definitely, um, well, omissions in these frames or things that could be better. One of the things is there could be mounting holes for uh, an additional 20x20 20 20 stack somewhere in the frame, maybe here or maybe here. Uh, maybe you want to mount a, a run cam split board. Uh, there's more than enough room over here for that. But uh, yeah, uh, you can of course uh, double sided tape it uh, or tie wrap it to the frame. But a lot of uh, freestyle frames have secondary 20x20 20 20 stack positions. Uh, so that would definitely be nice. Also the frame does not come with landing feet. Uh, to protect your carbon fiber if you land on pavement. Uh, yeah, there are optional landing feet, but um, I think uh, they, for the price of this frame, they should include it. Some kind of stick on foamies to uh, protect the frame a little on, in uh, landings uh, on pavement. That would definitely be nice. Speaking of optional equipment, there are a couple of uh, TPU printed optional parts for this frame. Being this camera mount and well run cam right so uh, this mount is specifically meant for the run cam 5 But as uh, the run cam 5 is the, has the same dimensions as a GoPro session This frame this uh, this camera frame would accommodate a GoPro session as well nicely quality printed TPU and it also comes with extra screws Which is definitely nice here you get uh, five screws, longer screws, and those are meant to go through the mount. It has four mounting holes into your frame and uh, obviously these are longer because you'd have the added thickness of this mount, right? So definitely nice to have those screws. Another optional part is this XC60 mount, which is uh, very, very nice. You slip that onto one of the risers, it's a tight fit, but it's supposed to be a tight fit like so, and you'd have your XC60 come up through that. And I, I actually use those works out like a charm. Another optional printed component for this frame is this uh, VTX antenna mount, which obviously goes over here at the rear over these risers. And it also has a receiver antenna, stubby mounts. It comes with three tubes to protect your antenna and caps. 
Okay, that's nice. And the last optional part are landing feet, which would uh, go to protect the carbon fiber over, over here, of course, and act as landing feet. I will probably not be using these because they add weight and they add weight at a uh, suboptimal place in your quadcopter, right? At the end of your arms. That's the last place you want added, uh, added weight. But if you tend to uh, run your quadcopter over pavement, if you crash into pavement or if you land on pavement, these will definitely uh, prolong the lifetime of your quadcopter. Oops, I forgot to tell you something. These landing feet do not come with extra screws. Where this camera mount does come with longer screws to actually mount it. You will need extra long screws to mount your motors uh, through these, uh, these TPU landing feet, right? And yeah, I think they should be supplied with these landing feet. In my humble opinion, I've already told Runcam that they should. And what you actually need, in case you don't uh, receive screws with these mounts, you need 3 by 8 mm screws. Those will uh, secure your motors well through these TPO mounts. Okay, dimensions of this frame are 15 centimeters motor to motor from front to back, left to right is uh, 16 and a half centimeters and left front to right rear is 22 and a half centimeters which makes it a 22 5 millimeter frame this speedy B frame weighs in at 110 grams, which is actually precisely what SpeedyB slash Runcom says. Battery padding, 116 grams. I always measure the weight of a frame like this, so the frame with battery padding, but a battery strap, 122 grams. So yeah, the rest is obviously optional, right? Uh, camera mount and charger, maybe you want to use a different mount, a lighter mount. Uh, maybe you do or don't want to add uh, the landing feet to the quadcopter. Uh, the landing feet, by the way, at, at how much? 11 grams to the frame, but you'd... Okay, 12. <laughs> 12 grams to the frame, but you'd also need longer screws. So let's make it around uh, 15 grams. Be aware that you are adding 15 grams at the end of the arms of your quadcopter by using landing feet like this. Not just on this quadcopter, but well, just so you know. Okay, in conclusion, and actually maybe it's nice to show you a completely built version of this PDB quadcopter. Here is one of my uh, fully functioning, already flying versions of the PDBs. As you can tell, I uh, did use uh, the, the supplied, well supplied, the optional camera mount. And I also used the supplied, well again optional, uh, FV antenna mount. However, might be hard to see, but I, <laughs> I mounted it inverted. And uh, can I show that to you? It should be mounted like, like so, coming out. Oh, this is very hard <laughs> to show you. Uh, like so. It should be protruding out of the frame. But I've mounted it like uh, so. Yeah. Uh, basically because uh, the antenna uh, that, that runs in the frame, that, uh, that cable was too short. Oh well, just my luck, I should have ordered a longer cable. Anyway, uh, this is uh, again one of the versions I've already flown. This one has a Racer Star motors. Why? Well, because I'm testing these Racer Star motors. The other SpeedyBs I'm building will all have uh, iFlight Zing motors. And actually I'll do a separate video with all the components I'm using on these quadcopters. And uh, yeah, I'll also include uh, a full list of all the components I'll be using on this frame in the description of this video, in case you are wondering uh, what, 
what goes into this quadcopter, what the stack is, what the camera is and such. In short, I very much like this frame. Again, I got one for free and once I had that frame I, uh, well, I was actually in the process of selecting new frames at that time. By chance. I do have a couple of other frames that were an option for instance the glide frame from uh, Kebab FPV. I had a Gap RC frame and uh, yeah those are all still uh, new in the box by now. This is simply a higher quality frame. It's also slightly more compact than for instance the glide frame from Kebab FEV. That frame is a little longer, consequently it also has a little more room in it, but uh, yeah. I went for this setup as you can tell. Ok, so maybe you have questions about this frame or anything else, hit me up a comment down below. If you have questions about my builds or this frame, I'll be happy to answer you. And catch you on the next video. Bye bye.